A suspect finally under arrest in the brutal stabbings of four Idaho college students. How detectives tracked him down. New details about the suspect of the shooting death of a Riverside County Sheriff's deputy who had a long criminal history. Why some say he never should have been out on the streets. And get ready for a wet weekend, but will the clouds clear for the Rose Parade? Now on the News at 10. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. She was a trailblazer, an iconic journalist, and the reporter who could get the interview that everyone wanted. Legendary broadcaster Barbara Walters passed away tonight at her home in New York, surrounded by family. She was 93 years old. Lou Parker now with a look back at her iconic career. She was a trailblazer of broadcast journalism, the first woman to become the highest paid news host in the business. Along the way, Barbara Walters redefined the TV interview. What will you tell your children when you have them? Mommy made a big mistake. Walters credits her upbringing for being able to relate to famous people. Born in Boston in 1929, her father Lou was in show business, a talent booker for high profile nightclubs. Walter says she was surrounded by celebrities at an early age and it kept her from being in awe of them. I was a very serious student because in part I kept changing schools, so I always had to prove myself. Her father's work had the family bouncing around from city to city during her youth with stops in New York, Boston and Miami. She attended Sarah Lawrence College in Yonkers, a tiny liberal arts school. After graduation in 1951, Walters immediately looked for work in New York City. And after a year, she got her first job in the business, working for WNBT writing press releases. I got a job as the assistant director of publicity. There were only two in the office, the director and I was the assistant. Ten years into her career, Walters would be hired on NBC's Today Show as a writer and producer. Her work caught the eye of another legend who helped launch her career. And I said, why don't we develop our own talent instead of going to another medium for it? And they said, well, such as, and I said, such as Barbara Walters. For 11 years, Walters worked up the ranks in the Today Show. Finally, in 1974, she was named the program's first female co-host, cementing her position as a star in TV news. Just two years later, ABC came calling with an offer Walters could not refuse. A million dollar salary and a chance to become the first woman to anchor the network evening news. 13 years is a long time to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. People thought it was the money. As I said, I was making more money. At, uh, at NBC, but I thought it would be a chance to have a normal life. At ABC, Walter's talent for interviewing took center stage. On the evening news and later 2020, she would get the interview other journalists couldn't. She twice interviewed Fidel Castro and scored an exclusive with Richard Nixon in 1980. Name an influential political figure of the late 20th century, and chances are Barbara Walters interviewed them. Do you have a terrible temper? No, but I do get angry about things. 74 million people watched her interview with Monica Lewinsky, a record for a news program. And in 1995, Walters won a Peabody Award for her story on Christopher Reeve, speaking to him just four months after he was paralyzed. The hours between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. are the worst. You don't sleep then? I do now, but I didn't then. Not by awake. Always evolving, Walters had a career renaissance in her late 60s when she co-created and starred in the talk show The View, which debuted in 1999. While Walters was known to be tough on her co-stars, she always had their respect. It was hard being under Barbara. She was a hard taskmaster. Barbara got on me. She said, you didn't say anything. And I go, well, they wasn't going in order. Stop being a child. Stop being a child. You're not a child. Grow up. The tributes to Barbara Walters are pouring in tonight. Oprah Winfrey posted on Instagram saying, quote, without Barbara Walters, there wouldn't have been me, nor any woman you see on the evening, morning and daily news. She was indeed a trailblazer. 
Now to developing news six weeks after four University of Idaho students were brutally stabbed to death in their off campus home. Authorities have finally made an arrest. The suspect 28 year old Brian Christopher Kohlberger was a grad student at a school just 10 miles away from the University of Idaho. Police say it was the white Hyundai that led to the break in the case. KTLA's Pedro Rivera joins us now with more on the suspect and the latest on the investigation. Pedro. Micah share because of Idaho law. There are still a few details about the arrest. The affidavit is sealed to the public, but we are learning more about that suspect in the murder mystery that has rattled a once quiet community and the nation.